Bijan Robinson is already an elite NFL running back. In only two games played, he's already showcased why he deserved to be the number 8th overall pick in the draft, and why he already should be considered as one of the top backs in the NFL. He's already second in the league in rushing yards with 180, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down film from the Falcons and Packers matchup in week 2, where B. John Robinson put up his best game with 124 rushing yards and 6.5 yards per carry, on 23 touches, getting 172 total yards, as well as putting up an 88.2 PFF rushing grade with 5 10 plus yard runs as well as 84 yards after contact. But let's get right into this film breakdown. All right, so the main goal on this play is to get Bijan Robinson out in space to the right side. So they're gonna motion in Janu Smith from the right side. So on the weak side, they're gonna have Jake Matthews on isolation against Justin Hollins. If Bijan Robinson cuts back inside, they're gonna have Drew Dalman be the lead block at center. But after structured, he's gonna help Matthew Bergeron in the interior against the one tech. Chris Lynchham and Caleb McGarry are in the same formula as the interior, except the lead block here is from Mikhail Pruitt. Because after the play starts, everybody on the offensive line does their job, except McCall Pruitt does get blown by for 55. But since Bijan Robinson is such a good one cut back, he's easily able to cut Kingsley and Gabari, um, then put him on the ground. Bijan Robinson's downhill ability is just so deadly. Now let's watch the play in full. One juke, two juke, three juke. And I mean, these are crazy jukes. How many running backs in the league can perform that quickly of ability to juke out defenders? I can only name a few. And even look at how quickly Bijan Robinson rebalances after juking. He's really got that 1% latent period. And if you don't know medical terms, that's your muscle twitch and how fast it can recover from doing a move. And even after Kingsley and Ngbari got through, he was still able to create multiple yards after carry. And if Waywalker doesn't get him here, he potentially hits the house. A big phrase a lot of you are going to hear with Bijan Robinson's game is his patience and how he hits holes effectively. Here's an inside zone to the weak side and look at Bijan Robinson's patience as he waits for a hole to develop. Even though it doesn't really develop, he still jumps over a defender to get a good 10 yards on this play. Here's another phenomenal instance of Bijan Robinson's patience waiting for the hole to open. Here's the Falcons running inside zone at a deuce left. Now after I pause the play, you guys can see a little crease open up in the B gap. But the hole doesn't stay that way forever as Darnell Savage closes it up. But Bijan Robinson still hits the hole with power behind Matthew Bergeron and gets a good few yards here as well as juking out Darnell Savage. Bijan Robinson with a lead blocker is not a fun thing for defenses to go up against. Here is a counter play from the Falcons. McCole Pruitt and Caleb McGarry are going to double team number 96, rookie defensive end out of Auburn. Matthew Bergeron is going to block the 4-I, and Jake Matthews is going to block the edge rusher. They're going to make Drew Delman the lead blocker on this counter, as after he snaps, he bails and leads Bijan Robinson. So Bijan Robinson fakes the handoff to the left and goes right. He's able to slip Colby Wooden and hit it to the second level, and from this angle, like he's got a clear lane, but he does trip on McCole Pruitt, but this run could have been a lot bigger if he was able to hit the outside. Again, really good things happen when you get Bijan Robinson out in space. These are the route concepts for this play by the Falcons. They've got two drags with their tight ends, Kyle Pitts and Jonu Smith, and then two in-breaking routes with Bijan Robinson going on a flat route. As I can see from this play, it looks like Bijan Robinson is the main factor of this play. The in-breaking routes on both sides, I think, are distractions for both the safeties and cornerbacks to bump inside so they can get Bijan Robinson out in the flat. And this is what makes me believe that this was the design for the play. Look at how Ritter kind of only checks Max Hollins to see if he's open and then quickly makes the read to Bijan Robinson as he sees 29 focused towards Max Hollins. And then with Bijan Robinson, who has room to run, does get tracked down by the safety, but he goes for 29 on this play. If Arthur Smith is anything as a head coach, he's extremely aggressive, especially on fourth and close. But he really comes up with very interesting plays. Now, there are two huge instances with this halfback sweep right here, and they both happened on fourth down. So for this halfback sweep, there are nine players currently in the box. And remember, this is on fourth and one, and they're showing run play here, or at least a sort of play action. So this play comes in the second quarter when the Packers are up 10-3 and the Falcons need a touchdown late in the second quarter. So Kayla McGarry and Max Holland's job is to seal off the edge rusher here. Drake London needs to close off Jair Alexander. And John Smith's job is to be the lead blocker or to help seal one of those blocks from Drake London on Max Holland's. And this is a sweet play, but look at how Bijan Robinson is offset to the B-gap instead of lining up right behind Desmond Ritter. So 55, the edge rusher, and 29 get two really good jumps on this play. With that little hole from the seal block from Jonu Smith, Bijan Robinson is able to hit the hole, juke Jair Alexander, and go for the first down in this play on a key fourth and one. And then obviously Bijan Robinson was the savior of this game. He had the deciding run on fourth and one when the Falcons were down by two. Well, what can we see immediately on this play? 
Well, it looks like the same play as the last one. They're in the same formation, and B. John Robinson is offset to the guard in the B-gap. However, unlike the last play, the defense is less suited for this play. The safeties are farther back, and instead of almost nine players in the box, they only have seven. And the defense is in a more balanced look, compared to the Falcons who have a heavy emphasis on the right side. And as you can see by my drawing, the play is almost the same. They're going to sweep it to B. John Robinson and let him go to get that one yard. And as I'm showing again, he's in the B-gap instead of behind the center. After running this play, the blockers hit their assignments much better than the first play. They were in a better look compared to the defense, and they got the jump on them because the defense was shifting a bit. But I mean, a very ballsy play call from Arthur Smith, not only to go from a familiar look that they ran on a fourth and one earlier in the game, however, going with Bijan Robinson on fourth and down and trusting him on a sweep to get those extra yards. And this play ended up winning them the game. But for any of you guys wondering how complicated this Falcons offense really is and how dynamic they can be when they want to, just look at this play. You've got double motion from Kyle Pitts. Tyler Algier moves from the slot to the backfield, flips from the backfield. Bijan Robinson goes into the slot. John o. Smith bounces back out into the slot. And this is a zero yard gain for Bijan Robinson. I mean, this was just one of the instances of complications that the Falcons run on offense. Listen, the Falcons are the best rushing team in the NFL right now, and I think the film proves it 100%. With a backfield duo of Algier and Bijan Robinson, and with that offensive line and that scheme, it's going to be very hard for defenses to stop the run because they have so many creative ways to get their running backs into space. And they have so many effective running plays that they can go ahead and use, or plays at the line of scrimmage, and I think Arthur Smith deserves a lot of the credit for that. When it's all said and done, I think that Bijan Robinson will end up top 10 minimum in rushing yards, and I think he'll end up top 5. Currently, he's 2nd with 180 behind Christian McCaffrey, who is leading the league with 268. With 23 touches, his career high in only 2 games, I think he should get at minimum 20 per game, and his carries should 100% go up after his performance in Week 2. And I really look forward to watching more Bijan Robinson film and seeing this Falcons rushing game uh, as it's just purely 1 of 1 to this league. Maybe only the Titans run the ball nearly as effective as